Assalamualaikum brothers and sisters. Welcome back to this Muslim Reads. I'm excited to have you folks back. I want to talk to you about something that's extremely important. And you know, it comes from psychology. And what this is, is temperament. What I want to talk to you about is temperament and what temperament means and what it means to be um, individuals with different temperaments. And why that is important or how you're going to benefit from that is that if you are the individual who has found himself throughout life maybe being a bit socially aloof, or you, if you are a parent who's looking at their child and looking at certain personality traits within them that is concerning you, not from um, a spiritual or religious point of view necessarily, but more from a psychological point of view. You know, you have a child that's spending a lot of time by themselves um, and you know, you're worried. You don't think that's normal. Well, let me present to you today something that can help relieve your anxiety a little bit. Or maybe if you're an individual who criticizes criticizes themselves for, you know, socializing a lot, uh, being with friends a lot, socializing a lot, um, you know, wanting to experience a lot of different things. And people have judged you because of that. Well, maybe I can share with you something today that might help you feel more accepting of who you are, may help you feel less judged and less critical of your own self, you know, let being less self-critical because that's really, really uh, important to have and have a healthy personality um, and to and to orient yourself in society so that you know where you stand in relation to other people. If you don't know your personality, if you don't know your temperament, then you don't know how to orient yourself in relation to your parents, in relation to even yourself, in relation to your children, and so on and so forth. So the book we're going to take a look at today is one of my favorites and it's really impacted me in my early 20s you know and this book is called the introvert advantage how quiet people can thrive in an extroverted world uh, by dr martin olson laney i hope i'm pronouncing that right but it's a book by um by this doctor who has um who has uh, who herself is an introvert, and she's written this book uh, mainly for introverts. And the reason for that is because 75% of um, society or 75% of the people, or you, or you know what, three out of four of every individual that you meet is an extrovert. And one out of four is an introvert. So the introverted people are a minority, and because of being a minority, they're often um, marginalized or they're judged or people don't understand them. You know, people think they're socially aloof. But really, some of the greatest um, personalities that we have, um, uh, uh, you know, people who are making a big difference in the world, for example, individuals such as Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, you know, um, uh, the author of uh, Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling. These are uh, famous introverts. Introverted people have um, made a lot of contributions, a lot of important contributions uh, in society. So we're going to take a look at what these um, two temperaments actually mean when we talk about introverted versus extroverted people and why that's important. Uh, what makes them unique? Uh, because each one of them has their own strengths. And, and you know, when I'm talking about great personalities, I want to, I want to, uh, because this is about this Muslim Reads, this project is about benefiting the, the Ummah, I want to talk about the greatest person ever to live on, on, on this planet, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and when we look at, or when we define some of the characteristics of introverted and extroverted people, I want you to maybe go back 1400 years ago and take a look at some of um, maybe the companions that you have studied or maybe the um, the prophet, peace be upon him, and see if you can find these characteristics within them. You know, I'm not I'm not encouraging you to psychoanalyze them or 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 such. What I am saying is that these are characteristics that are present in all of us. 
in human beings and it's important for us to identify them and one of the best ways of doing that uh, doing that is also seeing if we can identify them in other people you know practicing uh, practice identifying them in other individuals people that we love and we can relate to and off obviously the prophet peace be upon him is someone uh, that we we love and you know we we relate deeply with so I'm going to stop rambling there and just move forward to temperament. You know, temperament, uh, let's take a look at what that means. So temperament is your natural disposition. We all have traits that we're born with. Um, you know, when you look in your family, you might have siblings that were raised by the same parents. You know, they might have gone to the same school. And yet, do you see their personalities may be different than yours? This is what we mean by temperament. You know, a natural disposition, some traits that come naturally to each one of you, um, each sibling, um, that uh, makes each one of you different. So we all have uh, a sort of temperament that we are born with. So similarly, introverted people have an introverted temperament and extroverted people have an extroverted temperament. And then this is on a continuum. So you can go from introverted and start slowly, slowly moving up to extroverted and then vice versa. Extroverted uh, moving slowly, slowly towards uh, being more introverted. You can be right dead on in the middle. You know, you can be an have you can have qualities of both an introverted and an extroverted individual. So let's take a look at more of that. Let's try to now define what what these um, uh, what these temperaments are based on Dr. Laney's book. So she has these really cute terms <laughs> for these temperaments, and they are innies for introverted, obviously, and outies for extroverted individuals. So. Her definition for introverted individuals, uh, uh, in fact, she comes up with three differences that I've listed here uh, from her book. Three differences between introverted and uh, extroverted people, innies versus outies. And the first one is uh, related to energy creation. So introverted people, they get their energy from within themselves. So they their ideas, their self-reflection, um, their feel feelings, you know, thinking about their feelings, you know, reflecting, uh, taking that time out alone to reflect on things, um, gives them that energy, gives them that recharge that they that they need. You know, that's how they recharge themselves. Whereas extroverted people get their energy from the outer world. You know, unlike the in, uh, in, innies who get their energy from the inner world, the extroverted individuals or outies get their energy from the outer world. So their focus is more on outside themselves. So <clears throat> the second difference is response to stimulation. So introverted people are highly sensitive to their environment. They feel easily... Um, uh, they feel easily overstimulated. You know, there's this amazing TED Talk that I will post in the comments, uh, uh, comment section below from this brilliant professor who's introverted and who talks about how after his lectures, he quickly runs to the washroom because he's so stimulated uh, by, so overstimulated by um the audience looking at him from that in, in from that environment you can imagine you know you're a professor sitting in a class and there's these students looking at you staring at you and you know you you have to come up with this vast amount of energy to to deliver a presentation for maybe an hour or two hours and then you know it exhausts this this professor so because he's su such an introvert he's so stimulated that he runs to the washroom and then he hides in the washroom so that nobody so that he doesn't have to meet and greet with anybody you know and introverted people also hate being interrupted that's one of the key and uh, that's one of the, their characteristics as well you know they don't like being interrupted because what it does is it disrupts their train of thought so introverted people are easily overstimulated you know they want to limit their input they want to limit the energy that's coming towards them extroverted people on the other hand they refresh themselves easily by doing something in the outer world they seek experiences they want to experience a lot of things they uh, receiving a lot of stimulation receiving a lot of approval is 
what gives them that energy, gives them, you know, that feeling of um, uh, being refreshed. So they need a lot of stimulation. And in fact, if they don't, they can feel... Um, they can feel suffocated, you know, whereas introverted people, when they're too stimulated, they can feel su suffocated by that, which, which, um, for which they need to spend a lot of time alone. You know, they can spend a couple of days, a couple of hours, um, just by themselves and be extremely content with that. Uh, the third difference is depth versus breadth. So for introverted people, they love depth. You know, they want to limit their experiences and explore their experiences deeply. You know, they want to feel each one of their experiences deeply. Whereas extroverted people, they are into variety. You know, they want to experience a lot of different things. They uh, like variety. Variety is stimulating for them. It's exciting. It's energizing. So as we talk about these characteristics, can you think how some of these apply in your life. Can you see someone maybe in your friend circle, in your um, in your family that might be classified more of as an any versus an Audi? You know, think of these um, things as we talk about that. Uh, you know, in the beginning, I spoke about the prophet, peace be upon, upon him. And um, I mentioned that, you know, um, uh, and I, and I'm not going to label you know obviously I'm I'm not labeling um, him as an Indian Audi stuff for love like that's not what I'm want to do but what I want to mention to you is you know we we hear about how the prophet we have read about how the prophet peace be upon him you know used to go into a cave and spend time by himself over there to reflect so that's an example of uh, what according to Dr. Lanim. Um, according to um, psychological research on personality and temperament, you would classify as introverted behavior. You know, going and reach, re going and spending time by yourself to reflect on things. Um, so, so that's an example of um, introverted behavior. So, moving on, what Dr. Lenny talks about in her book, uh, one of the things um, in one of the sections. Um, is how introverted and extroverted people can take um, care of themselves. And there's three P's here, three personals that I want to mention from the book. And these are personal pacing, personal priorities, and personal parameters. You know, the, the key word here is personal. This is all having to do with you, taking care of yourself. So... Pacing is extremely important because, you know, think of the the story that we, the childhood story uh, that we have learned um, or heard countless times about the tortoise and the hare, and the hare, you know, the rabbit and the turtle. Basically, the rabbit, you know, um, uh, you know, we've heard, we've read the story, the turtle paces himself and eventually ends up winning the race, Um so pacing is really, really important. Um, do things in bite-sized pieces and notice kind of the ebbs and flows of energy in within yourself in your in, throughout your day. You know, notice when is it that I'm feeling really, really tired, and when is it uh, in the day that I'm feeling really, really active, and then pace yourself accordingly. Being aware of that will help you take care of your of yourself. Uh, a lot better um, you know pace yourself so that you don't end up feeling um, more so that you end up feeling more less stressed and uh, less overwhelmed the second piece is priorities you know uh, we all have differing priorities in our life uh, we all have day-to-day -day choices that we need to make so find out what's important to you for that day find out what has meaning for you in that day and then make and then prioritize your day accordingly so that you can you know remember we talked about energy and energy creation so if you're an introverted individual or you're an extroverted individual figure out what you need to prioritize in order to refresh yourself or recharge yourself the third piece is parameters personal parameters 
And that has to do more with boundaries. You know, boundaries are necessary so that you can protect yourself. You can manage how much you're being stimulated. And so you can control the energy around you in the space around you. So especially for introverts, for innies, this is really, really, really important because they can feel overstimulated. You know, remember that story I was mentioning about that professor who was, you know, delivering a presentation. You know, he felt extremely overstimulated because there was a lot of energy in the space around him. So then he needed to quickly go into his little alcove or into his retreat, which was uh, unfortunately in the washroom, but that's where he needed to go in order to escape from people so that he could recharge himself. So find out what you need to do in order to set those parameters around you so that you can take care of yourself. You know, one of the examples that I love using is when you're in an airplane and they're talking about, you know, safety and the oxygen mask popping um, from up above uh, from the roof, you know, they always say, you know, make sure you take the oxygen mask and you put it on yourself before you put it on um, uh, your, your um, uh, before you put it on the person beside you. So taking care of yourself is extremely important before you take care of someone else because if you're not in the right headspace, if you're not in the right frame of mind um, and you're not caring for yourself, then it's going to become very, very difficult for you to care for uh, those around you as well. Whether your father, son, wife, you know, mother, uh, in all the different roles that you play, if you're not taking care of yourself, it becomes more difficult for you to function uh, and be an effective, be effective in your role. So those were the three things that Dr. Lenny mentions in her book, and I know these are just tidbits um, from a vast amount of knowledge that is in her book, which I recommend for you to purchase and read. It talks about couples, it talks about an introverted individual being married to an extroverted individual and how to deal with that. It talks about how to manage extroverted and introverted personalities in the workplace. So that's important as well. You know, lastly, I want to leave you with guilt versus shame because we are talking about temperament and we are talking about personality dr lenny also talks about guilt versus shame um you know guilt is something that is related to behavior you know you might commit a sin you might um steal or you might not pray and you know you feel guilty about that so that you repent and you know you work on that and you make the intention of not committing that sin again so guilt has to do with a specific behavior Shame, on the other hand, has to do with your core self, who you are. Shame is about thinking, you know, there's something completely wrong with me. You know, I feel ashamed of who I am. And as Muslims, I want to emphasize this point, I hope you're listening, is that as Muslims, the sensationalism that we see in the media when it comes to Islam and, you know, terrorism and these kind of things, you know, it really kind of inf can infect our core um, uh, infect our identity and kind of uh, and really shake it as to the point that you know we're we feel ashamed of who we are as Muslims so it's really important to understand um, who what it means to be a Muslim in the first place understand our religion and our place in our religion and secondly it's also important to understand our temperament and our psychological kind of personality you know we're looking at this from a holistic point of view we're looking at who we are um, you know, physically, who we are, intellectually, psychologically, spiritually, religiously, it's it's a holistic model that we're kind of looking at at the at, at this point. So shame has to do more with um, what's uh, feeling that there's something innately wrong with you, with your temperament, with your personality, and and so be careful. Uh, be careful about other people making you feel shameful for who you are. Be careful about friends, family, you know, media, um, so on and so forth, making you feel shameful for who you are um, because you shouldn't. You know, you shouldn't feel shame as long as who you are fits within the guidelines of Islam. You should not feel shameful for who you are, you know. A lot of times what I'm finding is what people are doing, especially in today's day and age, is they're taking their personalities, um, 
and and they're saying you know what let's take islam and filter it through our personalities so they might have a very dysfunctional temperament they might be have a disposition towards violence towards chaos towards anarchy you know and i'm going to put a say bluntly you know individuals like isis uh you know the extremist groups that we see you know there's people in that group that have a natural disposition towards chaos and anarchy and violence and you know and so what they have done is they have taken Islam and they have filtered Islam through their personality and and when they have done that what the end result is that they're left with that part of Islam that fits with their kind of uh, personality which it has to do with like I said you know chaos violence um, extremism and so on and so forth so what we should do as Muslims is we should take our personalities and filter it through our Islam you know when I think of um, when I think of um, the great personalities of the past when I think of you know Khalid bin Walid when I think of uh, Umar when I think of Ali when I think of Uthman uh, may Allah be pleased with all of them each one of them in my mind in invokes a different personality each one of them were leaders each one of them you know lifted islam the status and respect of islam each one of them were leaders and respected in society um however each one of them were not they were not copycats of each other they were uh you know they each had their own personality um you know that's why you know we have a book entire book dedicated to who uthman radiallahu the biography of uthman radiallahu no the biography of, of umar radiallahu no and so on and so forth each had their personality each had their strengths so similarly you as a muslim i as a muslim we have our personality and we need to take our personality and filter it through islam so so that we can use those strengths in our personality to be effective muslim leaders inshallah and that's what i want to leave you with um please subscribe to this muslim reads if you have benefited share this video uh um inshallah and if you like the book click on the affiliate links below to purchase it till next time um Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.